Let's have a look at the results of our paired samples t-test. Now our first table shows us some descriptive statistics and we can see that the mean competency before starting the job was around 42.47 and after one year on the job it increased to 54.269. Now the purpose of the t-test is asking did this difference just happen by chance in our sample or is there enough evidence to suggest that in the population employees will be significantly more competent after one year on the job? Now, the table we're really interested in for the results of our t-test is this paired samples t-test table. And if you look at the heading here, this is paired differences and it extends all the way from the end of the confidence intervals to this mean. And that means that all of these values here relate to paired differences. So this first one is the mean of the paired differences. And we can get this value by taking the first mean and subtracting the second mean. So 42.47 minus 54.269. That will give us minus 11.79762. The standard deviation score is the standard deviation of the paired differences. So if you imagine taking the difference for each participant of their competency before minus the competency after. So like having a new column of paired differences and finding the standard deviation of those differences. That's what this value represents. <clears throat> Next, I wanna look at the T statistic. So our T stat is minus 26.062 with 69 degrees of freedom. And this is a very, very small value. And this value is what gives us our p-value here in our sig column. And our p-value is very, very small for this test, 0 0.000. Now, we never, ever say that our p-value equals 0, even when we have a value that looks like this. All it says is that p is 0 to at least three decimal places, so it's very small. So we report it as p less than 0 0.001. So basically what we're saying is the most the p-value could possibly be is 0 0.001. If we have a look down here at this table that I've entered into SPSS, it tells us how we can interpret this significance value. And we're always comparing our p-value to our alpha value. Now my alpha value is 0 0.05, but you should use your alpha value. If our p-value is less than 0 0.05, that means there's enough evidence to reject H0 and accept H1. Now, if you remember in a t-test, our null hypothesis always says there's no difference. And our alternate hypothesis is saying that there is a difference. If our p-value is bigger than 0.05, then that means we cannot reject H0. There's not enough evidence to, so we have to accept it and conclude that the means are not significantly different. So in our case, p is 0 0.000. So it's much less than 0.05. So we're going to reject the null and accept our alternate hypotheses, concluding that the means are significantly different. So in other words, these two competency scores here are significantly different. It didn't just happen by chance. Now, if we have a look here, what do we do when we have a one-tailed test? Well, a two-tailed test just says there's a difference. So in our case, employees' competency before and after are different from each other. A one-tailed test makes a specific claim about that difference. So we would say something like, employees' competency score after one year on the job are significantly greater than their score before they started the job. So if we had a one-tailed test in our output, we would need to take our p-value and we divide it by two. Now in this case, because p is already 0 0.000, if we divide that by two, we're gonna get the same result. So it's not really gonna make a difference here, but if you have any numbers in your p-value, you need to make sure that you divide it by two if you're doing a one-tailed test. Lastly, if we have a look at this confidence interval, it's for our mean difference. So this number is right in the middle between these two. And it's saying that 95% of the time, we expect the difference between the before and after scores to be between minus 12 and minus 10. In other words, we're 95% confident that the before competency score will be lower than the after competency score.